going very well, particularly up front where they really are scoring goals and uh, playing extremely well, particularly against Motherwell. And John Robertson, of course, who scored 12 Premier League goals, can perhaps recall the last time he played at Fir Park. And really, his menace and penetration counted a lot too hard. And so, you would make them after their cup victory last week, decidedly the favourites here today. But there's Motherwell without Davy Cooper, of course, he's not fit yet, but Chris McCart comes back in, and that is significant. Now, curious enough, Motherwell have done extremely well against some of the bigger teams, Aberdeen, Dundee United, Celtic, they've taken more than a fair share of points, including the league leaders, Rangers. When they went to Fir Park, Motherwell went up to that Dougie Arnott goal, and Rangers had a fight back and only got the equaliser late on in the game. But their fortunes this season have been decidedly mixed, and they'll surely want to pick themselves up from their last visit last Saturday. There's a ref, Ken Speckled, figure of Kenny Hope, still going strong. Kenny Hope just about to start the game, and because of the mauling the pitch received last week, they put down something like 50 tons of sand, and it looks flat, and even that's a very good job the groundsman has done. <laughs> Apparently, he was almost in tears last week. He must have been the only unhappy heart supporter around, but they, they've had a good recovery. I think it'll be heavy going all the same. And there's Neil Berry. I'm sure he's delighted to be back, even though he's facing a stiff breeze. His first game since August, would you believe? He was injured in the match against Falkirk in the Skull Cup. First full game, that is. That was a sub last week. And he'll be glad to be in the thick of the fray again. That and right underneath it. and fighting hard and I think referee not at all happy with that tackle by O'Neill it's away wide uh, oh Maxwell had committed himself too far Bannon determination there by Kidd Flexion corner kick. John Cahoon. I think one of the most dangerous players in the mood. Short one. Cahoon again. Well, well taken by Bennett. And you can hardly blame Scott Crabb for being in the way. It had to be taken first time. Well, that was superbly well taken by Bannon. First time, flicking it in. And just unfortunate that Crab was so near to him. Trini. And Robertson trying to get it inside. They're all standing back, looking at it. That's a very good ball. Superb play by Hearts. Crab picks it up. There's Philip in there. Wants to lay it off, and he can't. There's McKinley. 1-2 by McKinley, great move by Art! By far the most penetrating move in the game. Really was a fine ball to start off with. Setting Crab away, back to McKinley for the 1-2. And maybe a bit reckless with that shot. Perhaps he should have gone for placement rather than strength. And it goes to McKinley. Very strong win now. Beginning to blow some of the advertising hoardings down around the side. And that's how difficult it is out there for the players to be fair to them. Kusak. Bit adventurous. Boyd after it though, and that was reckless. Cannot fault Tom Boyd to Kusak. I don't think Vic Davies too happy with it. And the referee is going to book Boyd. And 
this is how David McPherson almost disappeared into the terracing. Boyd Butt. That's a little touch by Robertson. Crab. Bannon. And maybe Bannon should have been lying wider. He gets another chance at it though. his possession far too easily. So, five minutes of the first half remaining. I feel like imploring the lads out there to get on with it and give us something really exciting to finish this half. Hasn't been the greatest. Kirk asking the referee to get that line of players back. Goes Kusak. A rather aimless one that. Bannon driving away. Now then, the linesman had his flag up. And I think it was more than just the ball going out of play. I think there might have been a bit of niggle off the ball. Certainly Tommy McLean was up out of his seat. I think Kusak is going to be put for that challenge. Now, this is the challenge that brought it. Now, in goes that one, and down he went, and really, that was reckless to the point of being delivered. Well, Tommy McLean was irate even before that. Something happened off the ball. We went covering it, and he's off. Oh, Kusak is off. Taking everybody aback. Off he goes. Well, well, this is what was happening across there. And there was a kick, oh yes, that was quite reckless there by Kusak. And from that angle, quite culpable, and off he goes. Some of McKinley's crosses from that area have left a lot to be desired, but there goes the halftime whistle. And what an odd game this has been, negative right up to the last five minutes. One great chance for Hart when Tosh McKinley went through, and a delightful one too, but the keep rather lost ahead near the end. And talking about losing the head, I did say earlier that McPherson and Kusak were shaking up. I meant that sort of metaphorically, but there it was, the outcome, uh, a kick, and of course, an ordering off. And down to ten men, I do not fancy one of the most chances in the second half, particularly as Hearts will have the advantage of a strong win. And you would really expect Hearts in the second half with that kind of advantage to rub it in um, it was a fairly even game up to that uh, time uh, Mullable played a lot of tidy football without looking menacing it was Hearts look more aggressive faster but Mullable did have a lot of play and now they're really up against it well John Philemon just one of the solid defenders in view and it's been a defender's day the attackers haven't really impressed at all Scott Crabb started promisingly in this game. Showed some delightful touches, but like most men up front, it's been a very arid afternoon. Patterson did very well there. Good header by Patterson. Cahoon turns well. That body's so good at. That penetration of his. John Robertson, good break by Hart. That's a nice little touch. Well, Crab, I think. If you look immediately at that, you would have thought he would have bullied it, but it was a more difficult chance than you think. Just watch his break here. 
really caused by Cahoon in the first instance. And Robertson digging that in, and it was an awkward one. The player was in front of him, the ball was coming, dipping down to him. Well, the police and the stewards have created a big corridor here, and I think they're worried, frankly, about the pylon. They were looking up at the pylon, and I think if there's any doubt about that pylon, they should clear the whole terracing. And there we are, I think that's a problem. I think one or two of the lamps, uh, Guy Shugley. Well, Mayor simply did not know where that ball had ended up. There's an eel. And after this, nice ball round the side, John Robertson looking for a bit of support, not much there at the moment. McKinley came up. Nicely round to McKinley, great move, almost like the one he had in the first half. And again, he cannot finish positively. I really like the authority that finish. Down. He didn't like it, but uh, it's a free kick. Well, full marks to McKinley for going forward again in a 1 2 as he did in the first half. It's McKinley again, that's much. Well, it started off much better, but flew off the side of his foot. But as I say, all credit to him. rising up very well. Kirk. Grab after this. Cahoon hasn't had all that much service. Very bad in the uh, first half. Being quite happy to keep possession. Person wanting to take off. Creary. As he finds Bannon. Off it in nicely. McPherson is up. Here's Crab with a chance. Breaks the deadlock. And a little samba by a man you've seen scoring his 12th. Premier Division goal this season, and he took it well. As I said, he started the game very promisingly, rather faded out of it, but he always threatens. A very good positional sense, and then it came to fruition there. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't an easy ball it came to. If you do a little pitch kick, and he puts it away nevertheless, and uh, that's after 18 minutes of the second half. Bookings and ascending off for Motherwell. Lighted clears by Fullerton. There. That's Fullerton again. Kid. Oh, that was very cumbersome, but it got it away all right, and that. There's no offside, there's Bobby Russell. Oh, he ought to have done better than that. Trying to chip the goalkeeper, and that is the clearest chance they've had in a game. Hearts on the attack here. Crab cannot keep it in. Well, I did say somewhat earlier, in the second half that something of a miracle would be needed for Bonneville to score in this game with what they were up against and it almost fell to the feet of uh, Bobby Russell to create it through he went looked up tried to chip the goalkeeper but if you don't get it right it can sometimes look painfully lame as that did oh that was perfectly fair tackle 
tackle there by Kidd. And that's a good ball. Crab and Burnley. And Burnley could only trundle it out. And he was conscious of the fact that there was no other player behind him, immediately behind him. Couldn't play it off in any way. Robertson. Oh, good turning again. He's got a ledge towards a great goal. Oh, yes. Oh, no, that was a very fine goal. The angle was extraordinarily difficult. And I, I was just at the verge of saying he'll have to square it. And he confounded everybody by getting it past the goalkeeper from an almost impossible angle. And that is hot. Two up. And that is a game dead and buried as far as Bonneville are concerned because it is only about eight minutes to go. There's a little touch back by Patterson. Oh, Boyd can't get rid of that. Now, oh, Cahoon. Oh, dear, dear, dear. That did not look offside to me. Nowhere near it. We were right in line with it. again that's superb play now Cahoon he may try one at goal yes and coming off the determined and astute play of Craig Levy and a nice sweet sharp shot by Cahoon Given there, <laughs> and there goes the final whistle. Yes, Hawks quite by the winners at the end of the day. Um, one of them shot themselves in the foot to a considerable extent and limped off, but excellent goal nevertheless. That uh, superb goal by Robertson in particular, showing his real class. And Scott Crabb, of course, is, was substituted, showing just how lethal hearts have come up front.